Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Michael and today I'm going to be doing a cosplay breakdown of our Agatha Harkness cosplay from WandaVision on Disney+. Plus. Now Haley and I were massive fans of WandaVision. We loved every episode from the I Love Lucy and I Dream of Jeannie early episodes all the way up to the finale which premiered this incredible costume. Uh, and we knew instantly that we were going to have to make it um, from the It Was Agatha All Along sh song uh, when you see just the hem of that dress and she transitions into the 50s version we're like oh gosh we're gonna have to make this witch dress we just knew it right away um so as soon as we saw the hero dress or the villain dress i guess uh in the next episode and then so much in the finale we were just taking screenshots and doing everything we could to try to capture as many details of this dress as possible um it was really a lot of fun to make it had its challenges and i'm looking forward to sharing with you how we made it and uh, how you could possibly make it yourself so just like every costume that we put together um, the first job is always to collect reference images we collected as many reference images as possible from the show itself um, one issue we ran into was they have a lot of CGI like the smoke and things around the hem of the dress so we were having some trouble figuring out just how long the dress is how many layers were going on there but then uh, Disney Plus released the making of feature of WandaVision which had more behind the scenes of the fight sequences that Wanda and Agatha went through uh, uh, in, in their fighting and it, you could see the costume as it really was in those without all the CGI, without all that stuff. So we figured out how many layers the skirt is, we figured out the bodice, and then Haley went to work starting to ID the fabrics that we would use. So Haley has a master's degree in library and information studies, so she is an expert on uh, research. Uh, she is very skilled at finding this stuff and going through a bunch of different websites. Um, she ordered lots of different samples of fabrics, and so these are the ones we ended up with. So we've got this, um, this shimmery, purple, um, crinkled fabric, and then the main construction of the dress is this um, blue crinkled fabric and then underneath is a green and a purple shifting satin and then we have the fabric that is underneath the embroidery pieces which is a blue and black shift satin and so we are going to put the links to all of those fabrics where we purchased them in the description below um, if you're coming to this video maybe months uh, after this it's possible that some of those links might not be working anymore so I apologize for that but that is where we found them and so hopefully if you're looking to to make this dress yourself you can use those links to purchase that fabric um, I'll also put the yardage that I, I estimate that I used um, down in that description so you can get it there but if you're making this for yourself I would recommend doing a mock-up first so that you can do an estimate because your measurements and your size might not be this so you might order the same fabric we did and you might need more or less and you don't want to waste money so I always recommend doing a mock-up and patterning out your dress first on yourself uh, or your your muse, whoever you're making it for, uh, so that you can order the right amount of fabric. So in getting started with that process, I started with this pattern here, um, Simplicity 1345. Um, so I knew that I wanted to make a bodice first. Um, that needed to be the first step of making this, and this looks like the best way to get started. Um, I've never made like a corset before, so I knew that this was going to be a learning experience for myself, and I did want something that uh, closes in the back. I didn't want anything that had like the the the, con the, the connection pieces in the front. Um, I wanted everything to be in the back, and so look D here is the one that uh, I used to get that started. So I cut out that paper pattern and then um, cut it out in muslin, and then did a fitting on Haley to make sure that it fit. Um, I really didn't have to make many adjustments, but um, the few adjustments that I did have to make, I now have a really solid bodice pattern for Haley, and I'm going to use that as a block pattern for any kind of dresses like this that I make in the future. Um, these kind of patterns are really helpful so that just they can be your go-tos, you know they fit, you know they're going to work every time, and you don't have to like remake them and um, re-pattern out everything. Um, so label them and keep them someplace safe so that you can pull them out and reference them whenever you need. So the very base of this uh, dress is made like a, 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 um, a purple cotton and then I used the uh, green and purple shimmer layer um, is, is also underneath there so that um, when light hits this dress and when it moves around um, you can kind of see the layers underneath there. Uh, that translucent effect was really prominent in the show and we wanted to replicate that as much as we could on this dress. So I did the fitting with the bodice, made sure everything worked correctly and and then got started on the skirt. Now the skirt is a lot of different layers. We counted about five different 
different layers in the show. In the behind the scenes features, you can see that it's made of quite a few layers, um, several petals, uh, kind of of the of the blue crinkle fabric, and then there's a solid layer that has the uh, the kind of the purple and green shift fabric, and then there's just kind of other stuff in there. Um, and the very base layer is just a tattery layer. It's all just kind of tatters, and you don't really see that much in the show because it's covered up by CGI. But in the behind the scenes feature, you do see that layer. And so in order to make the skirt, I use this pattern. This is Butterneck B. Uh, 4377. This is the same pattern that I used to make Haley's Aurora dress. And so I did another mock-up. I cut out in muslin the um, skirt pattern according to the directions here. Um, but on this dress, there isn't any kind of slit or anything. It's just a solid skirt, a big full solid skirt all the way around. And so we knew on this dress that Agatha did have a slit over her left leg. And so I just drew a line down the muslin where I wanted that slit to be and cut it. And that became my new pattern piece. Um, that's really how I do a lot of pattern changing. Um, I will just do it in muslin first and make sure it fits. And then just draw the lines where I want the changes to be. Um, I didn't have to make many changes to the neckline so that slit adding that slit in the front was really uh, most of the work I had to do so in these layers there um, we did quite a few layers uh, there's two layers of the crinkle the blue crinkle fabric so that is uh, the layers on top. Haley also ordered this uh, pleated green mesh fabric and um, you don't, this isn't something that was necessarily screen accurate, but we had the fabric on hand and we thought it would be fun just to add another layer to it, to add more swooshiness and fun to the skirt. So we went ahead and did that. So there's an added layer there. Then there's a whole layer of the green and purple shift fabric. Um, the wrong side, you just see the purple. And then on the green side, you see that beautiful shifting effect and then um, underneath that is a layer of a purple um, tool. Uh, just the whole layer is I cut at the same pattern um, and did all that in purple tool and then we cut all of that to create the tattered layer underneath. Right here on the front there's also more um, strips of the blue uh, satiny silky fabric and then the uh, crinkled um, other this, this crinkly fabric. Um, so just uh, just a mess. <laughs> we just kind of wanted to make a mess under there um, because whenever she moves and with the movement of the dress, you do see that layer in the behind the scenes feature. So that's what we wanted to replicate here. Um, also in the show, it's all smoke down there the whole time. Like you pretty much only see like CGI bottomed out smoke. Um, so it, adding more of that tattered layer underneath there just created that movement and created that sense that she is just this cloud of darkness uh, going on underneath there. So after I did my pattern, I uh, had the pattern all with the bodice and the skirt figured out, then I ripped all that apart and started to create the dress. So the, um, the bodice itself, the top of the bodice is made with, like I said, the, um, the purple and green shift fabric underneath there. I used uh, steel boning to create um, the shape so that it would have a lot of support. Um, I got those from corsetsupplies.com, corsetmakingsupplies.com. Um, thanks Casey Renee Cosplay for suggesting those to me. Check out her channel. She does so many tutorials and including corset making and other things like that. So super helpful. I had no idea what I was doing, but she told me just what to order. And I'll also put those links down in the description. And so this dress does have steel boning on all of the um, seam areas which was the same instructions that were on the pattern so I just replicated those and followed the instructions there um, to create the bodice. The to crinkle the blue crinkle fabric on top um so in order to achieve that effect in the show um it really like comes more up here to the waist pretty much everything meets here and there's kind of you can see the lines more meet like it's coming up through here what happened here was I just ran out of fabric. Um, I just ran out of this perp, this blue fabric because there was so much taken up by the skirt. This is like two layers and the skirt is just these massive triangular panels. And so this ate up all of my fabric allowance. So I really just kind of ran out of fabric. But I think the effect ended up really great still on our dress. It didn't create kind of all that bulk that happens right here in the middle. It kind of makes it look more slim. Um, so it still kind of gathers over here in the corner. So I'm happy with the way it came out. Um, hand tacked each of these rows kind of around where the boning is going to be. So these seam boning. So hand tacking, um, the way that I did that on this dress was I, um, from underneath, so I sewed a stitch up through all the layers 
and I tried to get my needle to come up through where the natural um, wrinkle of the fabric is, so those natural pleats. I didn't want it to be really obvious that there's a bunch of tacks because those can make little tiny divots, and I didn't want little rows of divots kind of squishing this beautifully pre-pleated fabric doing all the work for me ahead of time that Haley found. So I wanted to make those tiny little tacks coming up through um, the depression of a wrinkle and then coming right back down, maybe like a tenth of a tiny millimeter to the next uh, to, to the side and then back down and then kind of doing a wide stitch underneath and then again back up a tiny stitch up and that is just to keep all of these layers in place because walking around and moving around in this dress I didn't want all of this fabric to be like shifting around or scrunching in weird ways I wanted to stay in place and so hand tacking is a way of doing that it can really only be achieved through hand sewing um, if I did a machine stitch you would see really clearly that stitch all the way down and I didn't want that I wanted it to be the illusion illusion that this fabric is just floating on top of the dress, which I think it turned out pretty well. Um, underneath here, down at the bottom, um, again, I hand tacked all of this down, um, so I didn't want like a really obvious top stitch. So again, that was all hand tacking down all through the bottom of the dress onto the skirt after I had added that. Um, the bodice itself is three layers all together. So there's a blue crinkle fabric, the shifting green and purple underneath that. And then underneath that is a cotton layer. Um, so that's kind of like a lining um, that is going to hold all of those boning channels so that everything is going to stay in place. Um, big solid job uh, so that it can be worn comfortably and not have like boning rubbing up against the skin or anything like that. I really want it to be as comfortable as possible. So that is how we uh, are. I made the, the bodice. After making the bodice, I then patterned out the yoke. Um, so the yoke is the shoulder piece that is holding on uh, everything up here on top. So what I did for that is again, I took muslin and I just laid it out on my dress form on top of the bodice and used a pencil to draw the lines of where the yoke was going to meet the bodice. I just, with a pencil, just drew lines um, right over that and then cut out the muslin so that it had the shape. Um, so this yoke piece comes all the way to the shoulder and then it comes underneath the armpit here um, and then around the back and then there's a solid line across the back. Um, so that was the, the pattern for the yoke piece. Um, then I patterned out the collar piece that goes um, just to the side here, there's a zipper in the back, which I'm going to show you when I turn the dress around. But um, because of kind of the Puritan um, uh, collar that she has, kind of a harken back to her 1600s uh, Salem witch uh, style, uh, which I, I loved that they added that. I thought that was a cool feature. Um, so... With that in the middle, it meant that I had to make the collar into two pieces. So there's one piece over here and then one piece on the other side, and then there's a split in the back for the zipper. So that's how I patterned out the collar. Then the um, ribbed white fabric, uh, which is the collar piece, uh, was just one solid collar piece that went all the way around. Um, one thing to note with this dress is with that white right there on the neck, um, makeup can really easily wear off on that. Um, it, so Haley's like foundation and makeup can rub off on that and kind of leave that smeared. Um, obviously we can't put this in the washing machine. So we just use an OxyClean spray. Um, I just use an OxyClean spray and a, and a rag and just kind of rubbed the makeup off with the OxyClean and it worked great. So you can see that it's white and we don't really see any makeup and so good to go there. So after creating the pattern for the yoke, uh, I then cut that out in the blue satin. Um, that is not really visible anymore. It's kind of all covered up by the embroidery. Uh, and so I cut that out of the blue satin and uh, sewed that onto the bodice and did lots of fittings while I was working on this to make sure that it was fitting Haley as I was working on it. Um, that's one thing that's really great about our collaboration is that she's usually sitting on the couch over here and I can just say, Haley, try this on and uh, can try it on really quickly. So I, I enjoy that we're able to do that. Um, then they came the sleeves. The sleeves again are the same pattern as this one um, because it has the point already. So this butterick pattern was really great. Uh, use the same sleeve pattern for that. And so that is the sleeve that is underneath here. And so this sleeve goes all the way up, all the way up to the shoulder seam. And there's just a whole sleeve under there and then it has the point. So um, that's the same way that it is in the show. Um, I think in the Disneyland um, Agatha Harkness, um, there's like a little loop 
loop that attaches this point to her finger. Um, we were able to achieve this shape without needing a loop. So it really wasn't something that we needed to add, but that is something you consider if you really wanted to keep this down on your hand, uh, you could put some kind of loop at the end to loop it around uh, your middle finger so that it go, it stays down. But um, the way Haley wears this, it was, really wasn't a concern for us. So we didn't add that. Um, then underneath there, there is the long uh, draped sleeve, kind of this bell shaped sleeve um, that is underneath. And so this again was just um, two uh, kind of triangular shapes. Um, I used a pattern to get the shoulder, um, the shoulder line correct. And then they were just kind of big triangles that came out from there. And then um, I surged the inside because this fabric is kind of so thin and delicate, it really lended itself well to surging. Um, surging also gives it some stretch so that it's not just going to get stuck in one place. Um, so I use my Janome serger to uh, surge all of that from the inside. Um, pretty much all of the skirt layers, everything, um, the, the purple sleeve layers, pretty much everything is surged just because it's such like a thin, delicate fabric and I wanted it to have some stretch here and serging really lends itself well to that. Um, you could also use an overcast stitch if you don't have a serger um, or you could use like a zigzag stitch on a regular sewing machine so that um, you could do it that way. So you don't have to have a serger to do that but since I have one uh, that's the way I went with that technique. Something else I did on this dress was I left pretty much everything unhemmed. Um, all of the edges here, this, these, these are the selvages of this blue uh, pleated fabric is at the, the end of the arms. And so um, I didn't want this hemmed. Um, I also didn't hem any of the, the purple shawl fabric. So all of that is the raw edge there. And then the entire skirt is also un, unhemmed. Um, we wanted it to look kind of more tattered, more wild, more like she's been wearing this for hundreds of years. And so we didn't want a clean, shiny, uh, him on any of the skirts. So um, over time, um, over the past couple months that Haley's been wearing this, um, pretty much only this layer has been impacted by that, but I just think it <laughs> adds to the effect. The more she wears it, the, the cooler uh, it looks down here. So um, definitely looking very witchy and wild like Agatha was in the show. So um, yeah, no hemming required for this dress in my opinion. Um, pretty much going to be good to go. So after patterning out the bodice, the yoke, and the sleeves, and getting those sewn on, um, then we did the skirt. So sewing on all five layers of the skirt all together, um, the serger was able to handle that. So that's the um, the very top of all the skirts. I serged them all together through all five layers. It's thin fabric, um, but um, you do want to be careful because uh, some sewing machines, the needle might break or something. So sewing through that many, um, I use my Continental M7, from Janome and it's a power horse uh, so it was able to sew so through all all five layers um, but lots of fullness on the skirt all of these layers work really well together um, and then I hand tacked the opening on the front so that it would have that slit um, so there's a little pinch right there and then just a couple of stitches all the way through all of those layers so that it would be um, it would be left open and that's pretty similar to how it is on the show so I think the effect came out pretty well um, on the side, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, uh, bugle buttons. Um, so these are very similar to what she has in the show, and we can also put a link to where we got those down in the description. Um, then there are also uh, six flute, uh, bugle beads on each side of the sleeves. So when calculating, I think that's about 18 um, that you would need for all of the buttons that are on her dress. So after sewing together all of these pieces, uh, we can turn her around. And have a look at the back. So here you can see the fabric. There we go. So um, there is a zipper going all the way up. Um, I didn't have an invisible zipper on hand that was this length. Um, it had to go all the way from the top of the collar down to the bottom of the skirt. So um, I, if I had one on hand I probably would have used an invisible zipper but this is just a coat zipper um, that was the longest zipper I happened to have in my possession. So and it worked perfectly well. It's very strong um, and you can see the back here like these back panels all the this is hand tacked down as well um, so that it achieves that, that stayed still effect and it's not going anywhere. Um, so yeah, this is what the fabric looks like underneath. Um, and then that comes all the way up to the top. And so that is un, uh, covered up by these panels so that um, when Haley's walking around, it flows and looks very witchy and cool.
So after all of that was sewn together, then it was time to do the embroidery. Um, so the embroidery file comes from uh, the same company that did my Wizard Tailor shirts. Um, it, the uh, Twilfin and Tita, they uh, asked them to like, hey, can you create an embroidery file for me? And um, that's actually uh, funds that came from the sale of Wizard Tailor shirts. So anyone who's watching this who has a Wizard Tailor shirt, uh, thank you. Uh, we were able to get this embroidery file created uh, thanks to those purchases. So I really appreciate it. It. Um, so they sent it back to me and then uh, we used uh, my Memorycraft 550E, the widest um, hoop that is on that machine, to create this embroidery file. Um, what we did was we actually layered the file about four different times um, because of the size of it. It came in a little small so what we were able to do is um, uh, because uh, I didn't have like exact measurements of what exactly like it needed to be. So what we did was just um, replicated the, so copy and pasted the file one, two, three, four times and then um, set the machine to work. Uh, we did this over a blue tool and a white interfacing, so a white fusible interfacing. So that's how we get this really light blue effect is because there's literally a white layer of interfacing underneath that. And then um, the blue tool is on top. And then we use blue embroidery thread to create all of the vines that are all over this. Um, then uh, kind of since there was extra kind of overflow over off on the shoulders, just snips that off and then that became the collar piece. So the part that is on the collar, that is that embroidery, just kind of extra stuff and sew that all together um, through the layers and making a uh, collar and uh, turned it, you know, all the layers inside out. And so then all the embroidery was on one side and then the inside of the collar was on the other side and all of those raw edges are all protected there on the insides of the seams. Um, so that worked out really well. Also hand tacked all of this down, lots of hand sewing in this project. If you're not a fan of hand sewing, maybe this will be the one that'll get you excited about it because um, we needed to hand tack down all of this as well to the chest piece of the yoke. Um, so lots of tiny little stitches using blue thread so that they wouldn't show up and uh, making sure that all of that's stuck in place. Um, it's not like we sewed down every single vine or whatever, but just kind of like rows of hand stitching um, so that it would stay in place and not shift around when worn. So after sewing the embroidery on, it was time to do the purple shawl. So there's another layer on top of this, just this really fun dynamic fabric that Haley did such a good job finding this, um, that we added to the top of the dress. And so um, I think in um, the, I've seen a, like one or two behind the scenes pictures of how the Disneyland dress was made. And I think that shawl might be detachable. This one is not. Um, I wanted this dress to be all one piece um, to make it more con friendly, to make it more travel friendly. Um, so that whenever we were going, we didn't have to keep up with a whole bunch of different pieces. I want it just to be a zip and go. Um, so all of this is hand sewn down. Um, so the pattern pieces themselves, the sleeves are really big triangles um, because the bottoms of the sleeves, um, there's like some mulch. <laughs> if you wear this uh, out on the street, you're gonna get like, you're gonna be sweeping uh, and picking up stuff. So um, these are great big triangles. These pieces are big triangles um, that are connected there in the middle. And then those are hand sewn um, around the armhole so that um, it stays in place. But there's two big triangles on each side of the sleeves. And then there are um, rectangular panels that are down the front. So these are just straight cut rectangular panels that are bunched up at the shoulder. And then the back is the same way. Um, these are just great big rectangular panels that are sewn onto the back. And I pretty much used um, most all of the fabric that we purchased um, and yeah, pretty much use up all of it. Um, then up here, I hand tacked all of this down. I wanted to create those um, those layers that you see on the costume in the show. And so I hand tacked all of this down to keep that in place. So lots more hand sewing um, that went into effect on the front. Um, on the back, it wasn't really wasn't necessary. The way that it drapes, it just kind of stays in place, fortunately. Um, and then on the sides, um, added those bugle beads and then some length of chain. And we'll also put the links uh, to the chain that we used. Um, and Haley found all of that stuff. Um, so she found and sourced everything. Um, 
and then she used a bit of black acrylic paint to weather these just to make them look older um, and so just um, dry brushing black acrylic paint over the the metal of the chain um, so that it wouldn't look so shiny and new like when we first got it. So now I'm going to talk about some of the other items that we use to help flesh out Agatha and bring her to life. Um, the wig is back here and so the wig Haley got on Amazon and styled it is a lace front wig that has all this luscious hair because Agatha's got some wild and crazy brown hair um, and so uh, the hair is kind of a great accessory because I mean it can cover up stuff that maybe you want to cover up at the top if you don't want to do all this hand sewing it's going to cover up most of those details um, but Haley mostly like flips it back and kind of wears it um, more back so it can show more of the costume um, but yeah so she styled all of this mostly straightening it and um, uh, just shaping it uh, so I don't know a lot about wig styling. So if you want to see more from Haley and how to style um, Agatha wigs or other wigs, uh, be sure to comment and maybe we could do those videos in the future. The brooch is actually an officially licensed Agatha Harkness brooch that is from Entertainment Earth. Um, and so I have the box here. So it had, they um, sell a WandaVision, um, Agatha Harkness officially licensed certificate of authenticity um, set. And that includes a necklace as well as the brooch. And so um, Agatha wears this brooch as a necklace in a couple of her earlier costumes. And then she has the brooch kind of throughout. So um, you certainly don't have to purchase officially licensed ones. Um, this was just, we were super hyped about it. So I got this for Haley for her birthday. Um, but there's lots of different brooches brooches out there. Um, Haley's first brooch actually before this was released um, she had some that um, it's like three three women three maidens um, you can use a couple of different search terms on eBay to find brooches um, but this one you know looks great and so we wanted to go with that one and it kind of just lives on the dress unless Haley does some of the other eras and some of the other looks and we'll borrow it and put it on one of those dresses. For the boots Haley found these on Poshmark they are Fry brand um, lace-up boots that come up uh, to her knee about and then she wears um, black yoga pants underneath that um, which you really don't see because of all the tattery layers so um, those are great because uh, uh, they have pockets in the side so she can carry her phone and things when we're at conventions um, so these are really great so lace up black boots um, and these happen to be fry. When she's in her witch form, Agatha also has um, black makeup on her fingers to kind of be like the black of her magic. And so we have this alcohol activated paint palette, um, got this on Amazon, um, and we will link that down in the uh, description. Alcohol activated paint is really great because it's not water activated paint like most are. And so going throughout the day, if you just have like kind of eyeshadow or other kind of pigments on your fingers, that's going to rub off. That's going to like be gone uh, after a couple of hours. Alcohol activated paint um, only comes off with rubbing isopropyl alcohol on your fingers. It's the same thing I use for my Dr. Strange scars that I've talked about in uh, our Dr. Strange breakdown video. And so these palettes are really great. This is a bruise palette and so it has black, um, dark browns and other things. So um, she's mostly used that and uses a paper towel and just um, rubs the black all over her fingers and then uses black fingernail polish to create that effect. So um, if you want to try alcohol activated Activated paint. It's really great. Uh, highly recommend it for lasting all day. Um, it will come off with um, a hand sanitizer. Now that hopefully we're all using a lot of hand sanitizer, especially at cons, you should be washing your hands throughout the day. Um, hand sanitizer does have alcohol in it, and so um, using that can kind of make the black come off. So soap and water. Um, it's not. It's not going to come off with water. So um, you can still stay <laughs> uh, sanitary and uh, just make sure you're washing your hands rather than using uh, hand sanitizer throughout the day. When we went to New York Comic Con, uh, we wanted to add a prop for Haley to use while she was in Agatha, and so we created the Darkhold. Um, we could probably do a whole video on the Darkhold, um, and so if you'd like to see that, comment below, and we can do a whole breakdown video of how we created the Darkhold. But basically, um, these uh, this is a 3D printed um, book from uh, the design is by 3D Printed Props. And then our friend Ian at EZBSVS Studios printed it for us, the front and back covers and the spine. Um, and then through um, Google searching and hand drawing, uh, we created the rest of the book and kind of fleshed it all out. And so, you know, this probably deserves its own video. So again, if you'd like to see that, um, comment below and we'll do a breakdown video of how we made the dark hole.
So thank you so much for watching this cosplay breakdown video. If you have any questions about things maybe I didn't answer in the video, please put them down in the comments and we'll try to get to those. A huge thank you to Janome for um, the use of my machines. Uh, I'm part of their Janome Maker program. And so my Continental M7, my Memory Craft 550E, and uh, my Serger are all, I, I, they were all essential. All three of them were essential in making this costume for me. Um, so very grateful to be part of that program and to use these amazing machines. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like. If you'd like to see more cosplay content, more Harry Potter wand content, uh, give us a subscribe so you can see all of our videos. We are on Instagram. I am at the Wizard Taylor. Ha uh, Haley is at Hobbit Party. And all of those links will be down in the comments. Thank you so much for joining. Keep the magic alive and we'll see you next time. Bye.